So I have been using my phone for 3D photography since 2007. I'm sorry, 2017, which is five years ago. You can turn off the lights. Back then, I wrote a four-page article, and every, anything that I wrote is still valid. So what has changed since then is the following. Next. First of all, I upgraded my phone. I now use an iPhone 13. I went from 7 to 13, which is six generations of phones. And then I also upgraded my camera to, uh, I have been using this Sony full frame cameras. So back in February, I went on vacation in Utah and the only stereo equipment I had are these cameras and my phone. So for the last six months, I have been actively comparing the two and I'd like to share with you uh, what I have found. Next. Now, first of all, when we talk about uh, phone 3D, there are different kinds of phone 3D. First of all, there are, there is such a thing as a 3D phone, not made anymore, but at some point when they made them. Then people, uh, they have combined two phones together, take stereo pics. Like if you two guys use about the same phone, you use the same kind of phones. Then you can combine them with a Bluetooth. You can fire them at the same time since you already have two phones. Uh, this method here, you see, uh, some of the newer phones have more than one lenses. Does anybody know why, Richard? Does your phone have more than one lenses like mine? No? Oh, great. <laughs> you have the same phone? So do you know, you know, right? Why there are more than one lenses? Right, it's a, in my phone, one is a standard lens, one is a wider than that, and one is a telephoto lens. And the reason they do that is that the iPhone lenses cannot zoom. So when you zoom, essentially you do it digitally. So the only way to optically get different focal lengths is to use different lenses. So you can combine two of these lenses to take a stereo picture. And I'll show you how. Uh, you can use a beam splitter. I'll show you in a second what a beam splitter is. It has mirrors and, and records the scene in 3D through one lens. Now, the phones also, the latest phones record some depth information. So you can utilize that and produce a stereo picture. And finally, there is the mother of all stereoscopic techniques. You can use your phone sequ sequentially. You take a picture, you move the phone, you take another picture, and this is a 3D picture. Okay. You can turn the lights off. You want to turn the lights? Or... Oh, oh, okay. Now, um... This is an accidental 3D with twin phones. There was a reporter in the New York Times. He was comparing, I think, the iPhone 12 and 13. So to make the comparison more valid, he put uh, the phones next to each other and he was firing them at the same time. He created a little jig to support them. So I look at the article and I downloaded the picture and they were all perfect pair of pairs. So accidentally, he was taking 3D pictures he didn't even know. So if you have two phones, you can combine them to uh, take 3D pictures. Next. Now here I used the two, the two lenses of my iPhone. And there is an app. And when you run this app and you take a picture, it's going to record pictures from two lenses and then align them and give you a stereo pair. This is my cat Milo. When I saw that, I was really excited. I thought, wow, this is great. <laughs> my phone can take stereo pictures. I haven't done anything to it. Okay. Next. But then kind of my enthusiasm evaporated because then you go outside and you see there's not a lot of depth in ordinary scenes. So you can only use this technique for close-ups. Next. Like this one or next, there's a square over there. And that's the only reason, you know, otherwise maybe you could do a cha-cha if nothing was moving. Next. 
So here's what's happening. This is specific to my iPhone, but those of you that have phones with more than one lenses, you have something similar. When I turn my, my phone sideways, the right lens on the right side is the standard lens. I, I, um, Apple calls it 1X. The one on the left is the telephoto lens, 3X. And the one underneath is half X, is super wide. By the way, the standard lens is also very wide. It's the equivalent of 24 millimeter lens. So this one is extremely wide. And this is like 75 millimeter uh, focal length for portraits and things like that. So when you run this app, and this is the name of the app, when you take a picture, the phone records both pictures with two lenses, and then the software blows this up to 1x to 3x to match the to match the focal length, right? And produce the stereo pair. Next. But that's strange. Go next. And if you look closely, maybe you don't see it in projection, but in the computer monitor, you see the quality is not great. Next, and this is happening because. If you compare the 1X and the 3X, the 3X looks sharper than the 1X. Why? Because the 1X has been enlarged three times. So what you have here, you have, first of all, uh, and the, the stereo pair is using the telephoto lens only because that's what it's matched to. So you have a short stereo base, a telephoto lens, and image falls apart from one lens. So there are problems with it, but it's free. <laughs> so you can use it. Next, and it's always there. I took this with a beam splitter that I brought from one of our club members. Next, let me tell you what a beam splitter is. Uh, this device here that can fit in front of the lens, this one here is for standard lenses, and down here you see a smaller version of that for the, for the phone. This company that makes this is in Finland. That's not a new invention. People have been using these beam splitters for 1940s, maybe even before the boom of the 1950s. So the, the splitter has four mirrors and you see how it works. This is a stereo base. It goes like this and, and you record one pair. This is how it looks before I crop anything. Now, the, the problem with using the beam splitter is it has to be aligned very well over the lens. And you have a small lens, you have a small lens, so alignment is not easy. Then you have a narrow stereo base and you get a vertical orientation. You lose quality when you do all that stuff. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now iPhone has, a, has something called portrait mode. And I know also um, other phones have something similar. Maybe they call them portrait, maybe they call them something else. If you take a picture here on the left side using the standard photography mode, Everything is in focus because the lens is really small. If you use the portrait mode, you can make the, the background will appear out of focus. <laughs> so how is that happening? Well, what happens when you use the portrait mode? First of all, the, um, when you use long lenses like Richard does, right? He can throw optically the background out of focus, but this lens cannot do that. So this is done digitally. Digitally, through software, the phone throws the background out of focus. But if that's happening, that means the phone knows <laughs> where the background is, right? The phone has depth information. Where does it get this information? Okay, here's my iPhone again, and here's my three lenses, and here's the LED light. What the heck is this? <laughs> it turns out this is called the LiDAR scanner. You can Google it and learn more about it. But what it does is it sends... Uh, pulses of light, what light is that infrared light or uh, LED light, and measures the time it takes to come back and maps the entire scene in 3D. It takes this depth information and it stories together with a JPEG file. And if you have a program that knows that, it can extract the depth information. Let me show you in the next slide. Now, Stereo Photo Maker. Stereo Photo Maker knows how to deal with those files. Okay, so you take a picture with your iPhone or whatever phone in portrait mode. And then instead of, oh, it's a two-dimensional picture, that's all you see. 
But then if you go under uh, edit here, depth map, depth map, and you say here, open JPEG file, including the depth map. Next, this is what you're gonna get. Instead of a stereo pair, this is the original in 2D, and this is the so-called depth map. A depth map is a representation of the depth. Whenever it's dark, that means the, the object is forward. Whenever it's light, the object is in the back. So the depth has been um, represented in this form of a grayscale, and this is called the depth map. So go back one more, go back for a second in the previous slide. So what you can do now, you can do a number of things. One of those things, it says create a 3D image from the 2D plus the depth map. Next. So when I do that, next, boom, <laughs> I get that. Well, I took this picture in 2D and now I get to see it in 3D because the file has some depth information. Stereo Maker knows how to extra extract it, use it, and create a 3D picture. Next. Okay, this is the same setup. And I took those six months ago and I didn't know anything about depth maps or, uh, port I, but I used port mode for some reason. So, okay, this is a reason in 2D. Next. And this is Stereo Photo Maker saving it. And when you save it, it says how much uh, depth do you want? How much deviation? 3% is the standard. So this will 3%. Next, and this is with 10%. So, so once you record your picture, Stereo Photo Maker can make it a different depth. And the next one, pay attention, this is 5%. Isn't that amazing? That is crazy to me. So you take a picture and then you have a choice of how much depth you want when you pick. By the way, there are errors. If you look carefully in my head, it looks like my head is attached to the library in the back. I mean, it's not perfect. But what people do, that can be a starting point. Then they go and make things better via Photoshop. Okay, next. So we're back to this uh, summary here. Let me give you my opinion personally. 3D phone, no, I want to use my phone. Two phones, no, because I have two cameras, you know. Why would I bother with two phones? Maybe somebody else wants to do that. I don't want to go that way. I'd rather use twin cameras because I synchronize better, you know, I know them better. Okay, using the two lenses. Well, they're there, you can use them. The quality is not great. The stereo base will be short. And if my iPhone instead of 3X had 2X lens, then it will be much better. And I believe the uh, iPhone 12 has a 2X lens, not a 3X. Or it has uh, the standard lens and the <coughs> wide angle lens, which is half. So basically things might work better depending on your phone. Beam splitter, no, because then I have to carry my beam splitter, I have to align it. It's, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> Use the depth information that the phone records. What can I say? I guess that's the future. It motivates me from now on, instead of using the standard phone mode, use portal mode. <laughs> so if, if the phone will give me some depth information, might as well get it, it's free, you know, maybe one day I'll use it, who knows? So we're left with this. And the rest of my presentation is how to use your phone this way, okay? Okay, next. I have to tell you the story here. When I got my iPhone 13, it was back in October, I went to the Ohio club meeting and this is where the Ohio meets, okay? <laughs> the Ohio club meets in a supermarket. They give us a community room and it's free, so we take it. So I took this picture and I noticed that the sky over here on the corner was dark blue. And I took a picture with my camera and my eyes, my eyes, I remember the sky was gray dark, it wasn't blue. So all of a sudden I started thinking, oh, what's going on here? Okay, while I was inside, next, right outside our meeting room, <laughs> there was a little display here and I took a picture of it. Well, I was very surprised because I looked at it and it, normally a camera will give you a little bit of green because there's fluorescent lighting, it's complicated things. Well, the iPhone gave me the whites are like perfectly white, the pink was just radiating pink. I loved it, I said, whoa, this is great. So the next day I went out for my uh, hike with Vinny next and I'm gonna show you two pictures. Yeah, there you go, Rick, <laughs> and you will guess which one was taking with the camera and which one was taking with the phone. So this is picture number one. Next, this picture number two. And you can go back and forth, Rick, between the two. 
okay? So, okay, there's a big giveaway here, but my, uh, my cameras have a 35 millimeter lens and the phone is wider, it appears to be 24. So now you know that this is the phone, just because it's wider, but look at the color, what's going on here, okay? Like the phone recorded a washed out sky, white sky, and the columns look a little bit cream on the phone. Well, I'm sorry, the camera. And the phone recorded this more like white and I see blue on the sky. Well, I was there, so why don't you ask me, what did I see, what did my eyes see? My eyes saw what the camera sees, <laughs> not what the phone, my eyes saw this, you know, I don't remember blue skies or clouds. <laughs> anyway, so there was a lot of excitement in the beginning. This excitement kind of went down a little bit as I started comparing the two. Next. Okay, let me tell you some advantages of using your phone for 3D sequentially, okay? First of all, the phone is always with you. Right now it's in my pocket. It attracts no attention. I cannot tell you how many times I've been kicked out of places, harassed by guards <laughs> that I'm not allowed to take pictures while tourists go around the little phones and they're okay. Uh, one big power of the phone is that you can run 3D apps with the phone. A 3D app will guide you for alignment, will measure deviation, and will display your image in 3D. So that's a huge advantage. The stereo base is flexible, but that's true for all cameras, not just the phone. Now the phone has a small lens. Sometimes this comes handy, I'll show you an example. And finally with the phone, you know that it's a continuous image quality improvement. Any, the next generation of phone, most likely will have a better camera in it, right? It's a big selling point for those phones, how good pictures they can take. So these are all the advantages of the phone. Let me show you some examples. I was running and it was, it was foggy and all of a sudden the sun came out and I saw these beams of light on, on the trail and I had nothing with me but my phone. So I stopped and this is a touch I showed with the phone. Where is that? It's in Ohio, one of the local trails we run, trail running. The point is, you know, you will think, oh, I don't have my camera and this looks great, but you have your phone, so try that. Next. Huh, look at those apples. You know, I was thinking, this is a supermarket. I'm kind of a supermarket photographer. <laughs> so I was thinking these apples will satisfy a number of competition assignments. First is red, and that's an assignment in Ohio next year. Red, uh, food, round, because a round shape, and start with A. <laughs> nice, huh? So start building a database of uh, supermarket pictures. The point is nobody harassed me when I took this. And one day I was taking pictures with my camera in the supermarket. <laughs> the best I was doing, hey, come to me. Supervisor says, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking pictures. He said, why? Well, I like to take pictures of vegetables. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Okay, next. But now I can say, hey, uh, I'm calling my wife here to ask her what, what milk she needs, right? Nobody knows why you're using your phone. <clears throat> Most likely the thing you use as a phone instead of a camera. Next. In this example here, this is a display in the uh, Natural Museum in Cleveland. It's behind a glass and you have to flash your phone on the, uh, your camera on the glass. It's very close. So you need a wide angle lens and a very small stereo base, like five millimeters or something. So I think the phone was perfect for this picture here. Next. And in this, case, I wanted to use my, my globe there, it's just a, a glass ball. And I took a lot of camera pictures, nothing turned out, but a simple charger with my phone worked pretty well. Next. Now, regarding using a 3D app, there is uh, our friend, Matsui Suto, which is the guy who wrote Stereo Photo Maker. Back in 2011, he wrote an app for the Android phones and one for the iPhones. Now, I don't know if any of you uses that, but let me tell you how it works. You take the first picture and the app shows you a ghost image which helps you align the second picture. This is very similar to the Fuji 3D, in, uh, Fuji 3D camera in advanced 3D mode. Then after you take the second picture, you see the stereo pair on the screen. And if you can preview or use a viewer, or also you can put in anaglyph if you want, 
you can see your image in 3D. And, but two things that Fuji cannot do, the image is aligned. So the software will align the image while the Fuji doesn't. Plus it will show you a value for the deviation. You see at the top, it says deviation 2.1%. It can give you a numerical value, which will alert you if you did the thing right, you need to do it again. You put too much or too little, okay? So this is great. And this is a true story. I was in Greece and I was taking pics in Meteora, those monasteries, they're building rocks and I was far away on the road. So I had my camera with me, a Panasonic camera and I, I took a picture, moved like a couple of steps, took another picture. And I was very happy, I was very excited. I was like, wow, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna do so well in Detroit with this picture. <laughs> so all of a sudden I stopped and I'm thinking, wait, am I doing this right? So now I take my phone and I duplicate what I was doing with the camera and I see I had a deviation of like 10%. I was just way, way, I was moving way too much. Oh, okay, good thing I figured it out before I left. <laughs> so now I use the phone, what do I need to do? Maybe half a step, one step, until I get something that I like between two and 3% usually. And so after I, so I use my phone as a measuring device and then I can, you can take this with your phone, you don't, unless if you think that the camera has advantage regarding image quality. Next. Now there are also uh, photo apps, not 3D, but general. This one called ProCam, you can do so many things with your phone. For example, you can save the raw data from your phone unprocessed as the camera records them. You can fix your aperture, your shutter speed. You can change the color balance. Basically everything you can do with your you do with cameras, you can do them with your phone. You're not stuck with the version of the picture that the phone gives you. You can change it while you're taking the picture, okay? The only problem is you cannot run two apps at the same time. So if you're gonna do 3D, either you run the 3D app or this one. Of course, you can run this one and then take, use the other one to open the pictures, align them, see the deviation, but you cannot do it at the same time while you're recording. Next. Now, some limitations. I told you the positive, what are the negatives? The first two are negatives of the sequential method that you are limited to stationary subjects. And even though it appears very simple and very flexible, how much you can move, it's a little bit advanced because you have to pay attention to the alignment, the deviation, and also the post-processing is a little bit more complicated than getting your MPO files out of the Fuji. Now, another problem is the cost. <clears throat> I paid $1,300 for the iPhone 30 just when it came out, right? Well, that's a lot of money. I had a seven and I gave it to my wife and my wife is very happy. Now I checked the price of the used phone seven who dates from 2016, and it's like a hundred bucks. And the phone still, half of the picture you're gonna see tonight was staying on an iPhone seven, not the 13. So if you cannot afford the latest generation, just drop back a couple of generations. Oh, wait a little bit. Two years from now, the iPhone 13 will be, I don't know, 500, no. <laughs> I don't think in a couple of years, maybe 500, who knows? One problem with the phone, disadvantage compared to the cameras, it doesn't have camera controls. What do I mean by that? It doesn't have a tripod socket, tilting screen, zoom lenses, you cannot change lenses, you cannot use electronic flash, okay? You can still use apps that change a lot of things, but it lacks because it's a phone, right? It's not a camera, it's a phone. It's meant to take pictures. Now, the last point is the image quality. How does the image quality of the phone compare with the, uh, with the camera? Now, the phone has a small lens and a small sensor. So there's something called physics, <laughs> the laws of physics. The phone cannot break the laws of physics that say that a bigger lens and a bigger sensor will give you better pictures. I mean, <clears throat> but what the phone has, whatever it doesn't have in terms of size makes up with post-processing. Behind your lens on your phone, there's a powerful computer, right? Well, cameras have a computer too. When you get a JPEG file, something inside the camera manipulates the raw data to give you a file. Only the phone has taken to a bigger level, <laughs> tries to produce the picture exactly as you're gonna like it. 
Okay, next. Rick, yes. Well, that was part two. <laughs> the method, it can be done, but it's not as good as syncing cameras with Bluetooth. They're synchronized, but not very well. Let me. For phone or cameras? I have, I have no experience, but the pictures I've seen, if there's water, that fountain, I can see lack of synchronization when people can use to phone. I want to talk about this, the limitation of moving objects. It's true that if something is moving, moving objects are the biggest enemy of the single camera sequential stereo photography. But that leaves a lot of subjects that don't move. Buildings, architectural details, high rise cityscapes, landscapes, nature without the wind, museums and supermarkets, tabletops, a lot more. As a matter of fact, I did an informal investigation. I looked what pictures people enter in the competition in Detroit and Ohio. And I can tell you, I have a ballpark in my mind that 50%, 50%, half of the pictures we see in the competition could have been recorded with a single camera. Maybe they are recorded, maybe not, but I don't see anything moving, so they could be recorded, okay? Let me show you a few examples. This is interesting. Next, one of our assignments this year was hyper stereo, right? This is a hyper stereo from a moving car. I wasn't driving, okay? My wife was driving. I used the camera. I could have used the phone though. The phone can take a burst of pictures. Beautiful. Maybe it won an award, I don't remember. Next. Oh, this I was debating. I wanted to enter this. This is Chicago downtown. It's a weekend. And despite all this construction, nothing has really moved between my sequential exposures. I don't see anything moving. Very nice hyperstereo. Next. This one I also entered this year in Detroit. Well, nothing is really moved. That's a sequential picture. So you see, for hyperstereo, I could have had three pictures. No taking with the stereo camera. Next. Remember the assignment that Fred liked? What was that? The title, Not the Way It Used to Be. So I was driving down the road one mile from my house, and I saw this happening in this house here, and I knew they were getting ready to demolish it. So I got out of the car and I took a sequential. This is a sequential picture. So I could have entered in the competition. Next. This is how, this is exactly the same spot. <laughs> Two weeks later, there's nothing left. There's no, you can't even tell there was ever a house there. Very interesting. This is also sequential, by the way. Next. Okay, here's another one. Not the way it used to be. I think it got an award in Detroit. Now, I took this with a stereo camera, but why? You know, nothing has moved. I could have used my phone. Next. Night photography, I was downtown Cleveland at night trying to take some pictures for that assignment. I took this with my phone of a building, fine. Anyway, I can, you can challenge me for every assignment, I will produce you three very nice pictures <laughs> taken with the phone or sequential. Next. Uh, there was one assignment in Ohio called Winter. I'm gonna show you three entries that were, I used my phone, this is one. It looks like the water is running, but it's not running, it was frozen, it's winter. Next, here, we're running in the trail, sequential with the phone, it looks perfect. Next, this, this day, we had a record snowfall, right? And the next day we went out with Vinny the dog and I forgot my cameras, which is unusual, but because where I was throwing out, we left late and I was saying, oh, I forgot my camera. I, I, just for the history, I need a 3D picture of this road here covered with snow. And we're on the road because the sidewalks were impossible to walk on them. So I asked Vinny and my wife to stay still. <laughs> so it so happened that Vinny didn't move and I took the sequential with the phone and I got the, the shot I wanted. Okay, next. Now, a few more comments regarding phone versus camera and image quality. There is, I see debate like on Facebook, somebody will post two pics like this one was taken. And by the way, this was an eBay sellers group. It wasn't even a camera group, but it happens in camera groups too. Somebody will say, look guys, I took a picture with my camera. 
here and my phone here, which one looks better? <laughs> people say, in this case, people said, the phone, the phone looks so much better. <laughs> so I asked that lady, I said, what's the color of the vase? Is it white? She says, yes. Well, obviously the phone recorded white, but if you need to take this picture and somehow take it in a photo editing program and change it a little bit, make the vase look white. So basically, when people say stuff like that, first of all, there's areas of photography that cannot be taken with a phone, like sports photography, nature photography, whenever long lens are required, the phone will not do that. And then the phone, I think, is optimized for good appearance on smaller screens. If you start blowing things up, then you see that the phone is falling apart. Also, your camera most likely needs to be edited a little bit to look better. It's not made to come out to look perfect. That's what the phone is trying to do. Specifically, I found two areas of photography where I see a big difference. One is nature photography. I always like nature photography, and I think the camera for me definitely wins. The bigger sensor, better control of the color balance. I very much prefer the camera versus the phone. But then when I have situations like the supermarket museums and stuff like that with mixed lighting, somehow the phone, especially the latest version, does surprisingly well. I'm really surprised, better than the camera. I went to the phone museum and I took like a, a 100 camera pictures and let's say 25 phone and I kept all the phone almost and maybe 10% of the camera. I like the phone better. Next. Now I want to discuss quickly three concerns when you do this uh, sequential movement. The first is alignment. Now some people will tell you don't worry about alignment because Stereophoto Maker will correct everything. <laughs> well, Stereophoto Maker will do its best, but it doesn't do magic. So there are alignment errors that Zero Photo Maker cannot correct. So you have to be a little bit careful when it comes to alignment. The second is direction of movement and the amount of movement. Let's look at the next picture. I showed you this earlier to you. Next. This is misaligned and it drives me crazy. And if you look and if Rick wants to hit the upper arrow, the sphere is out of alignment with the background. If you hit a couple of times, then you can align the sphere, then the background will be out of alignment. The longer you look at it in 3D, you're gonna get a headache. I vendor in an exhibition, got accepted, and now I'm retiring because what happened? I maybe I moved the camera vertically in addition to horizontally, or I moved my hand. I'm not entirely sure because I'm holding the thing and I'm sitting the phone with the other hand. Next, but you will run in situations where you have shots that you cannot align and they frustrate you. So you have to be a little bit careful. Now, regarding the direction of movement, it, uh, I normally take the left picture first and then the right. So I remember when I combine the pictures, but there are cases where you might want to do the opposite. If you see clouds moving, and if you like hyper stairs of nature from high rise of buildings, whatever, there might be clouds on the sky. If you notice them moving, sometimes they move really slowly, but it's enough to show in your 3D picture. If you move with the clouds, this is gonna push the clouds back, which is the conservative thing to do because the clouds normally are the furthest object in the picture. If you move against the clouds, then they're gonna be pulled forward, which is, can be a problem if they're overlapping over trees and other buildings or whatever. But if they're not overlapping with anything, it might create an interesting effect. So you might consider the direction of movement as a variable. Next. I show you this picture earlier and look what's happened here. Can you tell the clouds have been pushed in the landscape? Can you tell that or not? Not as much, it was easier in my computer screen, but especially on the upper left, looks like the clouds have come over the mountains. That's because my direction of movement was against the clouds, but I had no option because I'm in a moving car. <laughs> tell my wife, okay, stop, go backwards. Okay, next. Now, how much to move? Well, there are two ways you can mess up. You move too much or you don't move enough, right? Do you put too much depth or too little depth? Now, between those two extremes, a lot of situation will work and you don't have to find the optimum, but general recommendation is the deviation should be between one and 
Now the 3% that's coded often, this is the maximum. It's not necessarily an optimum. And I advise you to be conservative. When I do with my phone and I see a number, I try to be around 2% because when, you, when I crop later on, generally I increase the, the deviation. And if you're not sure what's gonna work, you can always take more than one pairs with different stereo base. You can bracket it. Okay, next. Now I'm gonna show you a few pictures. I mentioned that I was in Utah and I only had my, those Sony cameras here and my phone. So all these pics were taken with the phone. This is the delegate arts in the national, in Arches National Park, it's the highlight of the park. There are some people there, but they didn't seem to move as I, I sit with my phone. Next. Third, arch. If you look closely, there are people down in the arch that are moving, but you don't see anything. They're very small. Really, they play no effect here. Next. When I see a sign, I usually take a picture of the sign to see what I'm photographing, right? And then I blow it up. Next. And based on this sign, I, re I saw that the name of this Go back, the name of this feature was, what was it? The organ, this rock over there, they all have names. But I, why take it in 2D when you take it in 3D? So I take it in 3D anyway, it's just an extra picture. Next, this is a hyper stereo and really the phone or sequential photography is perfect for hyper stereo. Next, assuming that, wow, this is the Dead Horse State Park in Utah. I thought it was in heaven. I mean, the landscape is just amazing. Next. Next. Oh, okay. Well, I've trained my wife at this point. <laughs> when she hears me say freeze, she knows she has to, whatever she's doing, just to stand still until I say, okay, you can move now. Next. Oh, I learned how to take 3D selfies. You know, when you turn the camera like this, take a selfie, all you need to do is shift the camera. Maybe I should learn how to smile too. <laughs> My wife has a great smile. I, I look, but I'm concerned. Is this thing gonna work or what? You know, you can tell I'm a little nervous. Anyway, so don't waste your time with 2D selfies. Just make them 3D. Next. Well, this is a phone picture and I entered it in Ohio in the main meeting and got first place. There you go. So you can win awards with the phone and sequential picture. I told you I prefer the cameras. And if I regretted one thing, I should have taken more. Oh, I drove my cameras and I broke the, <clears throat> the connection. So they were not synchronized anymore. I synchronized them with my fingers. <laughs> so that's another story. So I use the phone quite a bit. Next. This is the chapel where um, our daughter is getting married, July 9th. We are all invited. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a phone picture and I, I took a camera and the phone looked so much better. But the reason I'm bringing it up is the phone is a very wide angle lens. And if you tilt a little bit, you see how things are <clears throat> tilted. Next. Now flip it in the two. So I occasionally go back and forth. Occasionally I, um, <clears throat> okay, you see the difference? I, I straighten it a little bit. It annoys me, it annoys me that the phone, if you tilt it, boom, you're gonna get all these converging verticals. You know how this is done? Stereo photo maker, it takes me 10 seconds to do it. Next. I don't know if you remember when we talked about the unusual perspective, I told you rotation was a big issue and I was correcting the rotation. Well, it's the same screen. The rotation is here called basic. That will change the rotation. On the right side, it's just horizontal perspective. And then you, you slide the bars 10%, you see it's like a keystoning. So by doing this, you straighten the lines, you stop, you like it, you don't like it, you undo. Okay, next. I, a few pics I took in Chicago, I was playing with the sculpture, next. All of them with my iPhone 7, not 13, next. Good ideas, right? Next, who needs a stereo camera? Next. Oh, and these flowers are outside the supermarket <laughs> for a club meet. After the last meeting in May, I said, well, let me take a few flowers, next. So there you go, forget nature, just go to your supermarket. Nice, next. 
Ooh, unusual perspective. I put a lot of depth here. How does it look? Too much depth. So I just put my phone, right? You can put it right at the <clears throat> ground. Sift it a little bit, see what comes out. Next. Oh, okay. Well, one of my favorite things is store displays. You know why I like this? I feel like cheating a little bit because somebody took the time to organize a display. And here I come, I take a picture of it. <laughs> I mean, I have no, no involvement in making the scene. I just photograph. And I was thinking 10 years from now, 20 years, we're going to look at this like, what, what is this? Masks for children. Like, what? What is going on? Okay. But let me show you the next one. Next. So I was at the NSA Akron Convention in 2019, and we visited the glass making place, and there was a store. So while I was at the store, I liked the display, and I took a picture of this display here, right? And I call it Let's Dance. And it won first place for on-site competition. So on-site means the pictures you took during the convention are competing you know, with other people's pictures that were taken during the convention. Now, for this one, I kind of debated. I really like the left side, but you see this frame? That's not a frame I put with Sarah photo maker or anything. It's an actual frame of the display. And we saw some butterflies. So the judge said they got tired of looking pictures of flowers and butterflies. So the minute this popped up, it was like, they threw them off and they say, well, nice and creative, first place. Okay. And by the way, all my entries for the nice competitions are from 2019. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I saw them, I said, well, there's some nice butterflies and flowers here. Let's throw them in and see what happens. Okay. Now I'm going to finish my presentation showing you some pictures I took at the Henry Ford Museum, a place that I assume many of you have been there. It was November 10th. 2021, how do I know? Because it was a Detroit meeting on a Wednesday. So before I come here, I usually, I became a member of the Ford Museum. I stopped there, I take pictures. I mentioned that I didn't like the phone as much, but uh, the camera, all these pictures were taken with the phone, like this one. The phone, what I like about this latest one is the color balance, this comes right, no matter what. Plus I have the flexibility of the stereo base. Next, next. You see things you've seen, right? All of them with the phone. Next. Next. There. Yeah. Maybe on a Wednesday, nobody was there. Next. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of people walking around. Next. Next. Okay. Good stuff. Next. <laughs> okay, you know what this is? I don't know if you remember. It's an award or something. It's a, it's a small thing. It's not a big. So. This is an example of changing the stereo base to match, you know, whatever you photograph. Next. Plus some of those. Next. Next. Now, you know this, uh, you cannot get inside. So why did I take this? <laughs> well, I put the camera on the window, right? I skipped it a little bit. This diner. Next. What? Oh. Oh, okay. They were not serving on Wednesday. I somehow I think the red in this picture it looked different than the car. The car looks yes. The, <clears throat> is the actual car is deeper red? Yes, I think so. That's why I'm attracted to the car, but it never comes. That's because the phone does the color correction. It works most of the times, but if there's a dominating color, it can fall a little bit off. Next. Next. Okay, next. Now this is a model car mixed with a real car. Next. Another one. Next. That's a real car. Next. Okay, next. I just saw you. I mean, like it's hard not to not to take a good picture, I think. I'm at this point here. The phone just works. Next. Well, it will fail if there are people walking in the background. This is the kind of failure you can get if you miss the stereo base somehow. Next. Next. Now here again, you see the verticals, which means I had the phone, I pointed it down. Next, and then I fixed a little bit. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one bothered, but sometimes they do bother me. Next. 
Now here was a challenge because there's a sign here. The sign is moving continuously. So I, so I waited. I thought I'll take the picture at the exact same moment and it looks at the arrow, it's floating out. I don't know if you get the impression, it's floating. I missed it a little bit. Still though, I'm pretty happy. I didn't miss it completely. Next. So you have to pay attention for signs, you know, things that are moving in the scene, not just people. Next. That was hard to photograph, this long thing. Next. Statues, perfect for <laughs> sequential 3D. Next. 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 Okay, I thought at some point I'm gonna put a sequence together, right? Next. Next. Okay, the next is dedicated to Rick, <laughs> the famous chess. It's very hard to photograph. I don't, I don't think this is the best way to do it, but Rick had one when the starts with C. Next. Oh, now I'm out of the window inside the building looking out and then I took two pictures this and I thought maybe I didn't put enough depth. Maybe it's just 1% next. Boom, same thing, a little bit more depth. Next. Well, that's the end. And I have a summary in the next page. So basically what I'm saying is your phone can be your second stereo camera. Like today I went to Greenfield Village, right? And I use my cameras to take some pictures and I use my phone to take a lot of pictures. So it's like my second stereo camera. I always have it with me. It doesn't attract attention. As a small lens, it's water and shock resistant. You drop your phone and you break the screen, but somehow the camera is not misaligned. But you drop your camera and then you're in trouble. Now, use sequentially, you have flexible stereo base, lots of possibilities, stationary subjects, but as I demonstrated, there's a lot of them around. Now, there are 3D apps that will help you record and evaluate your 3D images. And the image quality right now on the last generation of phones, I think it's pretty good and improves with time. I don't think it will match the camera if you know what you're doing with a good camera, but hey, it's pretty good. And I hope I inspire you and motivate you, if you have your phone already, to use it for 3D. Now there are resources and um, Steve told me there is um, some information online. If you already have your phone, you can learn how to use your phone better. And there are different apps and techniques, you know, for both use your phone camera and using the sequential 3D. It was one of my presentations here, I think a couple of years ago. Okay, that's it.